a lot of my priorities at the time were my friends, a lot of partying. To be honest with you, I was, I was just sort of messing around. I walked in and I was like, this is like some Breaking Bad operation. This is, <laughs> this is, this is crazy, like what's going on? I must have held that phone, reading that same message over and over and over again for a good two and a half hours before I sent it. Hi, I'm Luke from Burnley Social and the following podcast is a Burnley Business Week special. Burnley Business Week is sponsored by Burnley College and organised by Burnley Borough Council and it features a full week of free live seminars. I'm also hosting a different podcast for each day of Business Week filmed and recorded right here at Burnley College. These will tell you the stories of different local figures in business. I really hope these interviews inspire you and I'm sure you'll find them relatable and valuable in many ways. The podcasts are released on Burnley Social's Facebook, Burnley.co.uk's YouTube and Burnley Council's Spotify. Without further ado, let's get into the interview. Enjoy. After starting as an apprentice, Ryan Evans is now a director at Batch Distillery. In this interview, he reveals an exciting new business venture in the works. So, Ryan, welcome to this Burnley Business Week podcast, sponsored by Burnley College and organised by Burnley Council. How are you today? I'm very, very good. Thank you for having me. So, for those that don't know, Ryan Evans is from Batch Distillery. He's a Burnley lad. He's going to tell us a bit more about his journey. Do you want to give your introduction? Uh, yeah, so uh, Ryan Evans, uh, I'm 25 years old uh, and I am currently the director at Batch Distillery. Where did this whole journey start off? Um, so I was uh, just out of school. I'd started college, um, sort of not thinking about my future and a lot of my... Um, <laughs> My priorities at the time were uh, my friends, of course, um, a lot of partying. Um, I was sort of cruising between different college courses. Never really had, um, never really had a grip on what I wanted to do in the future. Uh, and I, uh, to be honest with you, I, w I was just sort of messing around, um, which obviously uh, it's not the best thing. But uh, I think that's just to do with age. Um, I was really into my music back then. It was sort of my escape. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I just, you, you sort of hit that age where you're like, right, come on, it's time to get serious now. You know, you, you're an adult, you need to start acting like one. So what gave you that kick in the backside? Um, well, funnily, the, um, the thing that sort of gave me a kick in the backside was, I wanted money for studio time uh, right. to take the music career further. Mm. Um, and it, it just sort of went from there, really. That's that's when I sort of got my first opportunity to get a, a job. I, I did do work before that, you know, but um, a lot of it was sort of uh, labour-intensive stuff and just helping out rather than an actual job. When did you get introduced to Batch and when did that journey begin? Uh, so that journey began, uh, I was, uh, uh, doing a local gig. I was performing, um, at Sanctu Sanctuary Rock Bar in Burnley and I, we'd finished and we went on to the after party and I came across, uh, an old employee of Batch uh, called Emma. Yeah. Basically we was talking and we were a little bit drunk and it was sort of bouncing off each other, having a great conversation. I was talking about studio time. She was like, it's crazy you say you need a job because we need an apprentice, you're young, um, and I can see that you've got a lot of the potential. So if you'd like to, come up for an interview. Uh, so I sort of woke up the next day, um, thought nothing of it. Late evening, got a message from Emma saying, mm. would you still like to come down and have an interview? I was like, 100%. Mm. Um, I cannot wait. Um, and that was sort of the beginning you went for your interview at Batch. Presumably it went well. Do you want to tell me a bit more about that? Uh, Emma came and met me. We sort of walked into the unit. Um, and at this point, Batch had just moved into the unit. Uh, so it was still very much fresh and um, in the process of becoming um, a place they can call home. So when I walked in, there was this 
ugly uh, crushed velvet green, bright green sofa, um, a, like a fold-out table uh, that you'd usually take to like a bake sale or something <laughs> like that. Um, and there was sort of a fridge in the corner, a couple of pallets of stock, um, mainly being empty bottles that we... Um, and then there were, I'd probably say, one or two pallets with maybe three or four cases of stock on, and that stock being signature and nothing else. So um, that, that at that point, it was just, you know, one recipe. Um, so what were your first impressions when you saw this kind of basic setup? Was it, what have I got myself into? Or was it, wow, we're in the early stages here, I can grow with this thing? Or was it a bit of both? Uh, so... Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I came away feeling a little, uh, when, when I first walked in, I sort of got taken into the distillery. Um, and obviously at this point, I, I didn't really know nothing about distilling. So I, d I didn't know how anything was, how anything looked. Um, I, and I'll be honest, I didn't really do much research into it either. Um, so I walked in and I was like, this is like some breaking bad operation. This is, <laughs> this is, this is crazy. Like what's going on? Is it, um, you know, is it all above board? And of, of course it was like, I, I thought it was some Heisenberg operation. Um, and I remember M actually asking me saying, so do you know how to distill gin? And, um, again, I, I, I kicked myself for it afterwards because it were a couple of days before they got back to me. Um, and I kicked myself after I said, what's gin? I'd, I did no. not have a clue what gin was. I'd, I'd never heard of it. Obviously, I'd go out and I'd drink a vodka mm. or a rum. Um, and that was sort of my knowledge on spirits at the time. Mm. So that, that's all I knew. Yeah, it was it was, uh, it was was a kick in the teeth when I, when I walked away because I just thought, that why did I say that? Why would I come out with that? <laughs> but at the same time, you've got to be true to yourself and, mm. you, you know, you've got to you've got to be honest with yourself. So, uh, yeah, I did say, what is gin? And, I, um, what did she respond to that? Do you remember? Uh, it was a little bit of a giggle. Uh, and then she, she did take me through it and mm. she did, she did sort of tell me what I'd be doing and how I'd be doing it. Um, and what it would mean as me as an apprentice. So you, you started at batch and your apprenticeship was at Burnley college. Yeah. It was a famous apprenticeship. Yeah. Famous apprenticeship. And what was the apprenticeship in and, what kind of things did you learn? Um, so the apprenticeship itself was a PMO uh, because they didn't actually do a apprenticeship in distilling. Mm. Um, and PMO stands for Production Manufacturing Operations. Um, and I, if I, it, quite a while ago now, but if I remember, uh, it was only a level two. I don't think you could go past level two. Um, so it was a two-year course. Um, and I didn't have to come into college. It was, uh, it was, oh, how many hours was I doing? It wasn't 40 hours. I was on less than 40 hours a week. Um, and then I think it was once every fortnight or once every month, a tutor would come up to me in the distillery and he would work through the coursework with me. So there was, there was some coursework, um, and in terms of what I what I had to do as an apprentice, um, which again I just I, I can't thank Batch enough for it, was they taught me every aspect of the business. It wasn't just you know I, I'm a distiller, so I'm going to distill, or I'm going to label bottles, or I'm going to bottle. Um, after my first year, I made my first recipe. Uh, which is Apprentice's Vodka. And that was um, actually the first batch product that ended up on the shelves of Selfridges, uh, which was a massive achievement for me. But within me taking on that project, I learned about um, the web design. I was helping, I helped with the label uh, with Jane. Um, I helped with, uh, you know, just every aspect of the bottle. Um, how it would look, what the flavor, what the flavor uh, would consist of, um, all the way down to bottling and getting it out. Um, I also, we sent it out with a little gift. So this was part of our innovations club uh, and we sent it out with a little gift. Um, again, I had um, a very big say in what gift went with it. Uh, so yeah, in terms of what I learned through my apprenticeship, um, I, I would say every aspect of the 
uh, business from distilling to admin to where else work. Mm. Um, so yeah, it, 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 it was a really good, really good apprenticeship. Yeah. It's pretty crazy that from not knowing what gin was to getting your apprentice vodka on the shelves of supermarkets, that transition is is pretty pretty crazy to me. How did it feel to to get that on the on the shelves? So for it to be on the sel- shelves of Selfridges, mm. that that was massive for me because Selfridges is somewhere where I'd always wanted to shop. Uh, but could never quite afford. Yeah. Um, and then obviously as time's gone on, I do do get the odd piece from there now, but like Selfridges, Selfridges mm. is a, a, as a 18 year old yeah. to know that your product is being showcased in Selfridges. That, that is just to me is insane. Still now mm. at, at, at 25 years old, like that has to be up there with one of my best achievements, but they, that was sort of the turn. So mm. after the first year, within my first year, I just became so passionate about what I was doing. Mm. Um, I was trying to do as much as I could. Of course, being the apprentice, you do the apprentice jobs to start off with. You, you're not going to be, you know, at, at the top doing all the best jobs that you enjoy doing. You're going to have to do the stuff at the bottom, which nobody wants to do. And that's that's just being an apprentice. But um, I, I I can safely say that my passion for it became that strong that I sort of put music on a back burner. Uh, I was still involved in it, uh, but it was just sort of, I was so happy to, you know, it's very rare you can wake up in the morning and be happy to go to work with a smile on your face. Um, So I knew that, you know, uh, Batch was for me, which is why I'm Mm. still here seven years on doing what I'm doing. Yeah. Just for the viewers, where were you, where were you in music? What, what do you mean when you talk about music and where were you in your music career? When you say you put it on the back burner. You... So I were doing, um, at, at this point of putting it on the back burner, uh, I were doing local gigs. Mm. Do, um, doing what? Uh, so the, at, at this point. What kind of music was it? It was sort of rap, grime, um, rap and grime and hip hop. Mm. Um, and I was part of a group called uh, Break Things. Mm. And we do local gigs. Uh, and one came up on my memories on Facebook, actually, not uh, not that long ago. It was one in Townley Park. Um, that that was a really good show. Um, but it, it was just sort of like local gigs, um, you know, un- unpaid gigs. Uh, and I was doing a lot of studio time at that point. I was in the studio a lot, uh, recording as much as I could. I was, uh, I started networking with, some really big artists which were sort of Manchester based and they were um you know they they were big artists and they, they were being paid very good amounts of money uh, to go and do these gigs so it, it it was on the verge of taking off um and then the sort of uh the gigs just weren't really they weren't really hitting the spot anymore. And I think that's just because I was just enjoying batch so much and, you know, creating these new recipes and coming up with these new ideas and, uh, being so involved. Um, that's another thing I have to, you know, give a massive shout to batch at. They got me so involved. It, it, it felt like a family. It, it weren't like, you know, you're the apprentice. So you do what we say type thing. It, it, they always brought me in. They said, how do you feel about this? What do you think about this? And, it, I've always been, um, I have always felt like I've had a very big say, uh, which is always good. And over the years at Batch, how did you progress and get better, better and better? What were some of your favorite creations? What were some of your Ooh. customers favorite creations? Do you want to just talk about that journey? Yeah, that's, that's a very good question. So, um, in terms of, in terms of products that I've done that I really like, um, my my favourite will always be Apprentice's Vodka because that was like my first my first product. Uh, I put my heart and soul into it. I wanted to come, you know, with that like high end flavoured vodka, not overly sweet, um, and something that I can remember uh, for the rest of my life. Type thing, uh, which was of course Apprentice's Vodka. And then 
in terms of backstory, one of the uh, one of the ones that were really really good was I did a collaboration with Farmhouse Biscuits, um, and it it's got the most random backstory. So I, when I was younger and I was a kid, um, my mum used to walk me to school. Uh, I lived in Nelson at this point. Uh, my mum used to walk me to school, and we would have to walk past Farmhouse Biscuits. And I don't know if you've ever passed Farmhouse Biscuits when they're cooking up a batch of uh, cookies or whatever biscuits they're making at the time. The smell is out of this world. You can smell the butter and the, the melted butter and the sugar and the and the smell is just ah. Oh, it's Shout out Farmhouse thought. Biscuits. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, I, I absolutely loved it. Um, and, and I was a young kid back then. So if I was good at school, um, my mum would then take me into the little shop at the side and we would go and get this massive bag of broken biscuits. Uh, and in in the year of what we was doing, we decided to take on more collaborations with local companies. And I thought, how can I make it different? Um, you know, so I decided to work on a rum rather than a gin. Um, and I made broken biscuit rum, uh, which was obviously a nod to my school days of walking past and being able to get the broken biscuits. And, you know, Farmhouse, Farmhouse Biscuits is a very big company, a very well known company. So when I rang them up, I didn't expect to hear anything back from them. It was just a complete sort of spitball idea down the phone tell them a little bit of my backstory uh, and see what they come back with, whether they'd like to work with me or not. So I rang them up, told him the exact same backstory that I've just told you. Uh, they was like, we love it. Let's, let's do it. Uh, so they, they basically asked what sort of flavors I was going for and what I was doing. Um, and we decided that we'd go for like a lemon drizzle uh, biscuit, which, which they, they also make in, in their, in their factory. So that's another one of my favorites. Um, and then I'd have to say flavor wise, uh, peddlers pins, which was a nod to, uh, the Pendle witch trials. Uh, so this was Halloween time. Um, and anybody who knows me personally knows I have a super sweet tooth. I love sweet stuff. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of my flavors that I like to come out with and I find I do the best with is your sweet, desserty y um, type stuff. And it was a sour cherry gin. Um, and the, again, the backstory was just crazy. It was all about um, the Pendle Witch Trials and what went on there and perfect timing for it to be Halloween, mm. um, sour cherry. And that just sold out like crazy. It went in the Innovations Club. Uh, and I think it was gone that same week. What's the Innovations Club? Uh, so the Innovations Club uh, is a club that we run and uh, you sign up as a member and every month you get sent a new bottle of gin. Um, and it's where we sort of like to get very experimental. Um, it's, it's for somebody who likes, uh, you know, who likes something different. Um, we've, we've really pushed the boat out with some products, but then we've done your classic London dries and your, um, your other sort of standard products. It is predominantly gin. So it will, it, I mean, now it were predominantly gin when we first started. Now it is just a gin club. Um, and we, yeah, we, we've done some crazy products out of there, but they've just worked. And then we use, uh, the members feedback, uh, we get them involved. Uh, we have a club member collab once a year where the, uh, we get a list of members who will provide free botanicals, um, and give a little bit of a backstory on why they've chosen them botanicals. And then I will go away and work using those free botanicals to create a recipe. Uh, they get sent a bottle with the name on it saying, you know, for instance, if, if you, if you'd done it and, you sent your botanicals in and I thought, I love these botanicals. I'm going to make a, a recipe with it. And you get sort of a sample sent to you when I've done my first couple of runs and feel like I'm going somewhere and you can give your feedback. And then you would get a, once it's ready, you would get a bottle saying Luke's, um, for instance, if we went for strawberry, uh, Luke's strawberry gin. Um, so we, we do like to get the members involved as much as we can. 
Um, and obvi- obviously we offer incentives for our members, like they get a member's discount online. Um, and like I say, it's just somewhere where we can get super experimental, have fun, and hopefully the members will enjoy the products. I mean, I did one recently called The Italian Job. Uh, the artwork's really good on it. Um, and that is all based on pizza. <laughs> so I actually distilled with uh, Enduja or Endunia, if you're Italian, apparently. There's so many different ways. I've always ways called it Enduja, I'm yeah. not going to lie. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I so, hope I've not been saying that wrong. <laughs> well, there's there's so many different pronunciations. You speak to many different Italian people and they'll tell you a different version themselves. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll just go with the way it's, the way it looks on paper, which is Enduja. Um, we use cheese, we used, uh, garlic onions, and these are all things you wouldn't necessarily put in a mm. gin, mm. but it just works. Yeah. And, and we thought, why not get it out there? Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that's pretty much the gin club. Yeah. These innovations that you talk about and well, all, all your creations, you talk about peddlers pin and, the farmhouse gin were these recently or have these been when you were an apprentice or was some when these you have were been head over the years of the years yeah so you went from being an apprentice what was your job role after that uh so from apprentice i went on to become junior distiller junior distiller and uh while i was junior distiller i had one slot uh every year in the innovations club of course again like i say batch have always given me quite a big say so if I did have ideas and stuff like that, you know, th- there is more than enough opportunity for me to get in and do maybe one more or two more or predominantly though, it was, uh, old recipes, Ollie, um, who was my, my teacher, if you will, after him. So, um, all is related to, uh, Phil and the owner, Phil, uh, the owner. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, it actually started in Ollie's basement. Right, yeah. Um, and when was when was this? Oh, if you, I'm testing you here. Company so knowledge. I started in 2017, mm. and oh, I want to say I get this wrong every time, but <laughs> I want to say 2015. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but and this was right as the gym boom was happening, really, or just oh, before that. That was another thing that I I can't. Um, I, I just couldn't get my head around. It was like I joined and then all of a sudden everybody my age wanted to drink gin. And it, <laughs> it was like, where's this come from? Yeah. Why, why have I only just heard of gin? And now all of a sudden everybody wants you to drink gin. You picked such a good time yeah, to oh, start off, didn't you? 100%. You're now director. How did that come about and what are your roles as director now? We were in this AGM and it was coming towards the end of uh, Jody's two years as director. Um... And, uh, the, the shareholders, you can put yourself forward for it and the shareholders will either elect you as a director or not. Um, and I just, I, I felt like I wanted to go for it. I felt like I, I, I was ready for more, more, um, more responsibility. I think I was ready for something bigger, uh, and I had room for more capacity, uh, uh to work more. So um, yeah, I just sort of threw myself forward. Phil was like, you know, if anybody would, would like to be, become a uh, director, uh, you're more than welcome to, um, you're more than welcome to put your name forward. And I remember at first I was like, no, I can never do it. I could, I, you know, I, I couldn't be a director. It, it's too much. It would, it would, uh, I'm not good enough. Basically. Like I say, I'm very much an overthinker. I overthink everything. And sort of a week or so passed and I thought, do you know what? Let me just look into what it takes to be a director. And at this point I was doing future leaders. Um, uh, and what's, what's future leaders just for the audience. So future leaders is a, um, is a course that's run by Burnley bond holders. Um, and, uh, great for me. Like personally, I got a lot out of it. It was motivational for me. Um, we did a lot of networking. So I'm personally somebody who thrives off networking. Mm. It, it's what gets me going. It's what motivates me. And then I come away from that networking and I'm like, right, what's the next step? What's the next goal? How do I get there? Um, that it, it's very much good for me. Uh, but the, the course basically, uh, you went through different sessions. 
uh, we did a lot of different sessions with uh, Gina and uh, yeah, you, you met a load of people your age or similar to your age. I think I was the youngest in the group um, and they all have a passion for wanting to go further and wanting to push themselves further. And do you think this helps when you're becoming a director, this course, do you think this played a part in it? I, d- I do. Personally, I do. I, I feel like, um, like I say, I was questioning it for a while and then I sort of, I sort of sat back and reflected and I thought, right, so seven years ago I was here and I thought I couldn't go on and have a career. I've done that. And then on and on and on. And then I went to a session and I sort of, with within this close-knit network group, I was talking about potentially it being a thing and maybe putting my name forward for it. And I just had so much, um, so much, what would you call the word? Um, so, they sort of pushed me to, you know, you, you, know, you, you can do it and... Um, so much positivity from it, and almost like, like camaraderie and su- support yeah, between them all. Exactly that, and and that's it. That is future leaders. Like it's that networking and that support and that that whole. Uh, you know, you, you've got people on your side. I've made some great friends from it who I keep in contact with all the time. I've finished the course now, um, but yeah, future leaders is w- was just it, it was really really good for me at the time. Like I say. I thought that my career had flatlined at Head Distiller. I mm. thought I'm I'm as high as I can get now. Uh, there's nothing really left for me. And then, like I say, for, as I got further through the Future Leaders course, and we're doing these sessions, and you know, you feel I started to feel stronger as a person. Um, I started to feel stronger, not just in my professional life, but stronger mm. in um, my uh, personal life as well. So I thought, right, take take the time back self-reflect think about what you're doing think about where you want to be is it a good idea is it bad do your research i did my research and i thought but i'm gonna go for it i'm I'm just gonna send a message and i remember it now i text phil and i basically said look i'm ready for some more responsibility um i know it was a couple of weeks ago now that you asked this um but if the opportunity is still there i'd love to become a director and I must have held that phone reading that same message over and over and over again for a good two and a half hours before I sent it. I, just, I, I was just so scared and nervous to send it uh, to send it because I was like, what's going to happen if he says no? What's Again, me overthinking, but we got through it and I just sort of closed my eyes and just hit send. Mm. And I thought if, if my hand hits anywhere other than send, then it wasn't meant to be. And mm. I will not send the message. Um, so close my eyes, sent the message. And within five to 10 minutes, I got a message back from Phil saying, that's absolutely great news. Love it. Let's go. And it sort of went from there, really. Um, so I took on more work. And again, I'm learning sort of more the nitty gritty aspects of business now. Um, so, it, you know, before... I were learning bits of admin, sending emails, uh, social media, uh, label design, distilling, bottling, and all that sort of things. Um, but now we're getting into the the invoicing, and uh, you know I'm learning about uh, the duty tax, and I'm learning uh, the the director's responsibilities yeah. basically, and. I, it, it's getting into the real nitty gritty side of things, making sure stocks right, making sure invoices are going out on time. Are you handling the pressure? Uh, I am. I am. I've I've had moments where I've gone home and it's been like, what have I signed myself up for? But not in a bad way. Mm. I, I wouldn't say it was in a bad way at all, but in a really good way. And uh, again, another massive shout out to Jody because she's helped. She's helping me a lot. Obviously, Jody was director before me uh, and again another massive shout out to Phil because he's also helping me a lot they're, they're both helping me so much and they're they're they are aware that sometimes it takes me a while to warm up to things um and they are being very patient with me and they're helping me out a lot so brilliant so for people that are facing barriers like you were you've maybe felt your career was at a dead end jump 
jumping up to being a director is quite a big step that a lot of people might not be able to take. Just for other people out there that are maybe facing some kind of barrier in their life, what advice would you give to them? Um, so just go for it. That that would be my motto if it could be. Just go for it, like, mm. and have a support network network around them as well, like yeah, you have with the future it. leaders. Whether that's it's it. it might not be a future leader course, but would you say it's just any group that's going to motivate you and and push you into things? So yeah, I mean, I'm I'm uh, in 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 the. I have such a big range of where I get my motivation from and where I get my confidence from. And, you know, like music's had a big part to play in that. Um, I ended up taking on the music again after I sort of put it on the back burner. Um, prior to lockdown, I got into a different genre of music that took off. I go all over the UK now and I, I do gigs and uh, I get paid for it. We've, we've got to the point where I'm getting paid for it now. I'm doing a lot of content, which is reaching really good numbers on YouTube. What kind of um, numbers are you talking? So uh, my views on YouTube got range from anywhere to 40K to 160K views. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it, it's really taken off in, in the genre that I've picked up. It's a very niche scene and it's very uh, Northwest based, but mm. it is it is growing and you, you're you seeing a lot more events cropping up down South. And um, so it, it's getting really good. How does it feel to be a director of a fantastic Burnley distillery? And now you're doing unbelievable at music as well. You've got two of these big things going on and they're very different things, but you're somehow juggling them. How does it feel? So I, I think how I manage it is I have quite a hard drive. So if I'm not doing anything and I have no projects on the go and I'm not, I've said many times in this podcast, I'm a big overthinker. So I keep my mind busy by constantly being busy. Um, I'm always on with something. So I feel like it works for me as a person. I like, I don't believe in uh, burning out. Like I feel like, I, of course there is, if you're just doing nothing but working, you're going to burn out eventually. But, I feel like if you can find that right balance of you, you can work as much as you want, but as long as you have just that little bit of a rest, you, you're fine. As long as you have that music's always been a hobby for me. So that is my relaxation. A lot of people would see it as work because, you know, I'm performing anywhere from 9 PM till five o'clock in the morning to thousands of thousands of people, or maybe a couple of a hundred people, uh, depending on the gig. And, that to me is my break. It's my relaxation. It's my place to vent. It's my, um, so, so it is hard to juggle it. I won't lie. And it was especially like you say, when I took on the directorship because it, it entailed a lot more work, obviously, um, I've got a couple of other projects on the side that I'm working on at the minute, which is nearly, nearly live my own business. Um, and then, I've got the music. So at, at first it, it, it was a bit of a struggle, but you just learn to cope. You, mm. you get used to it. And that's where the motto comes from. Just go for it because, you know, the worst that can happen is somebody says no, or you, you get into something and you don't necessarily uh, enjoy it. But that, 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 you know, you can come away from that. You can, you know, you can step down or you can, but I, I just say, go for it. Like listen to motivational speakers, um, read motivational books. Have you got any tips on who you listen to or what you read? So for me, uh, the absolute game changer was Jim Rohn. Uh, that's J I M R O H N. Um, he's a lecturer, uh, quite an old lecturer. And for me, it's it's very much that flick of a switch. Your brain just... If you're told something in the correct way and somebody explains it in the correct way, it can be like a light switch. Um, and the very first person who started it was um, a person called Shaf. I used to meet up with him um, and he, he was a bit older than me. Um, we'd meet up and we'd just have a chat and maybe we'd have a gym session together and... At this point, this is when I was sort of not really, not really doing things. And everything he said to me, 
he just said it in the right way. It was exactly what everybody else was saying to me, but they were all saying it in the wrong way. And he would say it and it'd be like a light switch. And I'd be like, why has nobody ever told me like this before? Um, and then, like I say, that went on. I ended up getting onto Jim Rohn. Uh, there's also Robert Kiyosaki. Uh, I love love his stuff. Rich Dad Poor Dad. Rich Dad Poor Dad. Love it. Absolutely love it. Um, that was also a game changer for me financially. Um, and then, yeah, just just get lost with it. Like as soon as you jump on YouTube or you jump on uh, audio books and you type that in, your algorithms are going to start changing and you're going to start coming across these. You know, you've got people like David Goggins. Mm. And, and that's the main thing for me is mindset. Anybody who is who feels like they are struggling at the minute or they are sort of at a halt in their career, um, just change that mindset, get get motivated, get yourself around a group of people who want to see you go further. Don't get a, don't don't hang around with those same six people who want to go out drinking every week and do nothing but drink and talk to girls or, you know, like surround yourself with people who want to get to the next level in life. That's That's my advice. Yeah. That's what I've done, and it's worked for me. It's, it has worked for you, yeah. It's worked for you, and you're doing amazing at Batch, and you're doing amazing with your music. What's next, and what's coming up? Um, so I were saying earlier that I do have other projects on the go. Um, so again, still, um, still doing a lot of music. I've now added another genre to the list of the things I do. So uh, that's what genre sort of, is that? Uh, so it's uh, hardcore. Right. Um, it it's rough. I won't lie. Yeah, it's it's yeah. very rough music, but I've I've really grown to love it. Mm. I mean, hardcore is a worldwide uh, music now. Mm. Um which is really big in Australia. Um, so I've taken on gigs there. Um, I've done a couple and I've managed to sort of get myself in a good place uh, where I'm doing main stage, um, main stage, prime time. Um, and yeah, so just sort of running with that a little bit. And then my main project for this year has been uh, setting up my own business. Uh, so I've become very obsessed with training, the gym, uh, becoming healthier, nutrition. Uh, so I've decided to set up my own supplement company, uh, my own brand of supplements. Uh, it's registered as a limited company now. Uh, logo's been sent off to be copyrighted. I'm, I'm very much near the end now. It's just a case of, um, it's just a case of getting my order in. I've got a formula. I've got a recipe. Um, I've got, you know, the prices. I've, I've done the, the price breakdown and the, the profit potential profit and it, it's just going so well and i'm flying with it and i'm running with it and um i'm really excited to see what the future holds for it because i do strongly believe that it can it can really go somewhere so i'm i'm hoping you know my own business uh is going to take off but we'll we'll see how we get on it's one of those you, you've got to take those risks in life yeah absolutely and do you think your experience with batch gin over the years everything you've experienced in terms of business and maybe a bit in distilling as well, do you think that knowledge is going to be put to the test with this new business? 100%. Like everything that Batch has done for me as a person, um, I can't thank them enough. I've, I've always felt like family. Um, you know, I've learned like the sciencey bits, which comes in well when you're coming up with a pre-workout formula because you've got different um, different, uh, ingredients in there. You've got to make sure your flavor's right. You've got to, it, it's very much, they've got similarities to distilling. Batch is going to be a big help. Phil, the owner does know that, you know, I'm, I, I've set my own business up and I'm, I'm planning to run with it. When I started at Batch, I was just this little boy who didn't really, didn't really know how to, you know, if, if something did come up and I did have a thought on it or I had an opinion on it and I thought it was maybe the wrong opinion and we should have done something different. I was that person who started where I was sort of fragile. I, I, I didn't want to say if, you know, if, if I felt like I needed to speak up, I wouldn't speak up because I thought it might end badly for me, you know, but, and nobody give me that impression, but that that's just something I had going on in my mind. Batch has turned me into a complete different monster in a good way. Mm. Um, you know, I, 
I was never thinking about mortgages. I was never thinking about buying my own home. I was never thinking about setting up my own business before batch. I was never, none of these things ever came into play. Now that could have just been an age thing, but I don't think so. Mm. My, my upbringing, uh, what I was around from a young age and what I'd seen from a young age, I don't think um, there would have been opportunities for me if I didn't go to batch. And you know, when, when you're, like I say, earlier to the to the people who want to who maybe feel like they're stuck or I said you know get yourself around the right people mix with the right people create good relationships with the right people and that's the reason because you know when I first met Phil and I first met all and I first met Jody and they all have mortgages and they're all you know like they they are in, in in a professional career, they not they don't just have a, a job. They they're in a professional career. They have mortgages. They have ambitions. They have within a year of me working with them and being around them and sort of learning from them. That's when my mind just really took off, and I was like, right, this is what I want to do. Here's my targets. Here's where I want to be in five to ten years. Create a plan. Journal your stuff. Get to where you want to be. And and again, like I say, I have Batch to thank for that. With the new company, the supplement company, have you gone public with this yet? Can you say the name? Can you go into the details or um, do you want to keep it quiet for now? So I haven't gone public properly yet, but I, I do fully believe in it and I fully back it. Um, Is so, it a Burnley company? That's the important thing. It's a Burnley company. Fantastic. Yes, that's what we like to hear. It is a Burnley company. Keep so it in Burnley. That's it. hundred percent. Not not long now before I sign up to Burnley Bond Holders and I get in there. Um Obviously, I attend on Batch's behalf, but uh, so the name of the company is Zentrek, uh, Zentrek Supplements, and um, yeah, taking over the world. We're, we're doing it, uh, but yeah. So, like I say, we haven't gone public yet. We do, we don't we're not fully finished, but everything everything is there. Mm. Everything that mm. needs to be there is there. The foundation is there. It's just a case of getting the order in, um, and then then going for gold. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I do have a couple of other things that I would like to achieve. Um, but I'll, I'll probably talk to you about that afterwards. Okay. Not, okay. Uh, yeah, th- Maybe they, there'll be a part two to this next year. I or... think they will. I think they will. Well, hopefully they will. Yeah. Brilliant. Ryan, anything else you want to say to the viewers, any advice to young people wanting to start a career or young people that might be a bit lost? Just any final words from you? Yeah, if you're feeling lost and you're like me and you're an overthinker and you don't you, you don't believe in yourself the way you should, just go for it. Like just do just do you, be yourself because I've learned that trying to be somebody else as as you know growing up I was always trying to be somebody else who I wasn't. Um it doesn't work and you 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 will lose friends and you will um you know friends come and go when you're growing up so just just be you do what you can and chuck yourself at every opportunity you you may chuck yourself at an opportunity that may not pay off but that's whole, the whole part of it you you may get knocked down at points but you will come back up and it it will all pay off in the end because what you put in you will get out and that's what i truly believe and it's working for me so good stuff ryan thanks very much perfect